to episode 46 of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Planetverse. I am your host today, Karina Tovmasian, and with me is my illustrious co-host, Steve Morton. Hi, Steve. Hello, hello, hello. We have a wonderful podcast in store for you today. The two of us have put our collective brains together, and uh, all four neurons are firing at this point. And we thought... I was going to say, we need each <laughs> And we thought... Why not do a basic episode on how to buy and sell planners such that if you're the buyer, you actually get the price you want. And if you're the seller, you don't get ripped off. Hey, what a concept. Um, <laughs> both Steve and I have been adminning quite a few of these buy and sell groups at this point, And we've pretty much seen it all. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say, Steve? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> Either in the receiving end of things or just trying to control the mayhem, yeah. Um, we've, yeah, we readily accept the fact that people have us on their hit lists. We know that we are um, <laughs> pariahs out there somewhere. Uh, I don't think any of us care, but whatever. Uh, so what we thought was let's make an episode where we can get the basics out and inform the audience of what to look for, when to sell, when not to sell, and that all that good stuff that goes along with being an owner of a planner because you can't just own one, right, Steve? It's impossible. You can't just own one. Once you own one, you have to start owning the others. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want, even if you only own, want to own one at any one time, you might want to change that for another one. So there might be a sort of, if you only want to keep just a one, that's fine. <laughs> But you might like to change it occasionally. For the, <laughs> for the record, I would also like to say that Steve and I uh, wrote a document together called the Common Courtesy and Decency Swap Act of 2013, as penned by Morton and Tovmasian. This came from the Ministry of Stationary Mediums. It was an international multilateral agreement, which was never ratified, so it counts for nothing. Um, <laughs> and this came from the fact, if Steve recalls, if he can put his brain back into 2013 back when we had about what was it 700 members over in Filofaxi something like that yeah sort of quite a, quite a few less than there is now <laughs> how way. many have we got now there in Filofaxi alone oh, it's about 11 and a half thousand or something crazy yeah, so we're talking of a fantastic growth in about four years yeah. And right around the time I joined Steve in there, we noticed that there was an influx of people wanting to sell their products. And that's when the great mm. schism happened, right? <laughs> we, <laughs> not the one in the church, but the one in the planner world where so, er, no everything was... Um, in, back in the days when fire was invented, everything was collected in one little group. Um, and then what happened was everybody wanted to sell their planners off and they didn't know where they could do that. So they started selling in the group and it started getting crazy and nobody could see the actual planning conversations in relation to the sales that were happening. So there was a large argument and everybody off they went into their own respective groups. No, I just laid down the law and said, this is the way it's going to be from now it, on. Pretty much. Steve <laughs> stepped in and, and I remember I remember the, the post he had posted. It's, it started with, listen up. <laughs> or listen here, listen up, something like that. He was quite yeah. upset. So what we have today is a series of selling groups and buying groups and then just the aficionado groups. And I think that's good to mention right off the bat because if you're going to be entering... Mm -hmm into a particular brand or if you're interested in in researching more about that brand i would suggest you start with their main group page every one of them mm -hmm. seems to have one now there is a main group and then there is the little splinter sales groups that you can find some of them have them some of them don't right right steve it, I think the way things have evolved on facebook certainly um, having a separate sales group is it's easier for the admins to admin thank goodness um and it's easier for the the, the users of that or members of that group to actually find anything um you know the way that facebook have regimented things it sticks all of the sale items as a just a single list the presentation of them is in a similar sort of way so it's more complete if you like um, compared to the, the old uh, sort of discussion format groups where you had stuff. It was everywhere. Place. There was nowhere to find something. And still, 
As yeah. Facebook continues to surprise us with their unannounced updates, we as admin yeah. have to juggle our responsibilities, self-imposed mm. responsibilities, albeit, uh, with what the members want. And our biggest concern is mm. making sure that everyone stays safe, that no one is ripped off mm. and that people stay safe. But I will disclose this. If you are looking for a guaranteed hassle-free experience, do not sell on Facebook. If you mm. want a hassle-free experience, pay the fees on eBay and sell on yeah. eBay because it's free on Facebook and you get what you pay for, right? I mean, we mm. we can't we have no enforcement. Yeah. We have there's nothing we can do. If something goes wrong other than wagging a finger at someone and kicking them out of the group. That's all mm. the recourse we have. So, yeah. if you're looking for something that's hassle-free, don't sell on Facebook. <laughs> mm. Having There are other avenues, of course. Um and I will mention um, AdSpot on Filofaxi, which has been going for a number of years. I've now. had a lot of success on uh, on AdSpot. And it's it's very sort of ad lib. I look after you know basically you email me with the details of what you want to advert advertise or you want to find, and I put the listing on on the page for at least a month, um, sometimes longer. It depends on I, I vary the time period depending on how many adverts we've got. If there's not many adverts, then I don't put it on for I put it on for longer. If there's lots and lots of adverts, then it comes back down to a month. Things generally sell quite quickly on AdSpot, though. I, you know, quite often I sit here putting things together and making sure it's all perfectly correct. Yeah. Put the thing live, and then the person comes sold. back 15 minutes after I've said it's sold. Oh right, okay. <laughs> Take it's it. It's sold quicker than it took me to actually put the adverts on. And the best part is, how much does it cost, Steve? It costs nothing yeah. because we rely on a, a sort of honesty system in that if your item sells and it has to sell, of course, is all I ask you to do is to make a donation to a charity of our choosing, which is Chim Chem We, which is a charity for a, um, a school in Malawi. Now, I don't check to see if anybody's paid it. And Amanda, who looks after the, the charity end of things, doesn't tell me if you did or not. We don't have any communication on a regular basis. We say hi and what have you with pleasantries every so often. But I don't go checking up on people. It's purely honesty and it doesn't matter how much or how little your donation is. We just ask you to make a donation and just leave it on people's conscience if they do. I have found so many rare models of Filofax that I was looking for initially when I first started my journey with mm. planners on AdSpot. And I highly recommend it. Where can people find AdSpot, Steve? It's on filofaxi.com. And I will look for the AdSpot page at the top of the page, but I'll obviously stick a link yep. into it because the link's a bit more involved. So there's that. that. You can also find Filofaxes and Pens for Sale group on Facebook, which is one of the groups that I mm. admin. Um, and then the mm. respective brands have their own sale pages, as, as yeah. far as I know. There's uh, certainly gilio has got one. Van der Speck's got one. Um, pretty sure there's a Franklin Covey one as well. There is. Or, and then you've got all the um, traveler's notebook ones as well. The, the, this one the Midori ones. And, yeah. and, and all sorts of things. Right. It? So so what are we looking we, for? I do have access to a list, so I'll put a, a link we'll put to the, the list. list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and please, okay, so let's start at the top. Number one, when you join a group, please read the rules. <laughs> I know it sounds <laughs> obvious, and the admins go it's out of their basic. way to make everyone read the rules, and they're not there for decor. They are actually there to mm. help you along because I've had to recently uh, delete and block someone from a group for a very basic rule, very basic that is written right at the top, which is please don't sell this brand. We don't want this brand because it causes mm. drama. And sure enough, they listed that brand. Um, it seems mm. pretty simple, but yet people don't do it. So number one, please read the rules. Steve, what would you say is um, a number one rule for you? Certainly read the rules. <laughs> Try not. If you're uncertain about the rules... Contact one of the admins. More than happy don't to discuss. Don't say, don't post, um, delete if not not allowable, because that's what will happen. It will get deleted without even bothering to read them. Yeah, right? if you start <laughs> your post with admin, please delete if not allowed, guess what? I'm deleting it. Because <laughs> that means you haven't bothered yourself to read the rules to find out, or yeah. haven't bothered to message an admin to find out. So, yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, what else would you say, Steve? If if you're advertising, if you're the seller, 
um, and if you want to sell your item quickly, then there are a number of things you can do. Obviously, take nice, clear photographs of your actual item. Now, most people have access to some sort of digital camera these days, be it an actual normal sort of point and shoot camera or the camera on their phone. And my advice would be to place the item close to a window during daylight, preferably, and then photograph. What, what I'm trying to stress here is the quality of your, of your photograph is good. It shows the true colour of the item you're trying to sell, not um, sort of with a tint due to um, your indoor lighting and stuff like that. And take, you know, take sort of 10, 10 of 12 photographs and then weed out the ones that you're not quite certain about or you you jiggled the camera slightly something like that and just keep it to the keep it simple photograph anything that you think is a fault of the item and make sure that's in the description because the last thing you want to do is the person to receive it and then not be aware of a you know a crease or a mark or something like that it's best to be honest and upfront um, yeah, don't don't try to hide these things. things. Don't try to make it like no yeah. Point. Just show what it is. Say what it is, um, and certainly don't use those Instagram filters to try and make the colors look different than no. what it is. Because that's been one of the biggest complaints that we have. The color looked a certain way in the photographs, and then when they actually mm. get the item, it's not that color. You know, just be honest with the photos. Yeah. Make sure well, this applies to both buying and selling. Make sure the, the size is clear because. I think as we've mentioned in previous episodes, what someone describes as a personal size and what someone describes as a six size can someone sometimes be very different. <laughs> they are not the same. That's right. Um, and I've seen loads of ones where um, pocket is described as personal or personal is described as A5 and you look at the photograph and think, there's, <laughs> well, either that's not the photograph of the actual item itself or They're wrong. <laughs> it's the wrong size size completely. Um, now, generally, that tends to be people that are selling stuff that aren't really in the planner market. So this is really aimed if you're buying on something like eBay or Craigslist and you're buying from somebody who doesn't really know much about planners, um, to be honest with you. And that's a bit of a recipe for disaster. Remember I had that way, one guy really. off eBay who was offloading his girlfriend's 300 Filofax planners because she worked at Filofax at one point yes. and he had no clue what they were and I asked him for a specific model and he said what's, mm. what's that then is that the color you know I, I, and I was like yeah. no 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 let's let's start from the beginning <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah bye good luck with that sort of thing <laughs> some of the things that we we'll both will have come across at some point is price differences now specifically here i'm thinking I, I, i'm using the example of eu and usa but it equally applies to eu and australia or and various other places because um, tax um, tariffs and things vary from one place to another but for instance if you're selling if you've bought something in the eu and you're wanting to sell it to someone in the US, for instance, then in the EU, you will have paid um, VAT on the item. Now, someone in the USA, if they're buying new, they will not pay the VAT. There is no way they can re you can reclaim the VAT if you're then, you then subsequently sell it to someone in the USA. So consequently, there's always a price difference. 20 odd percent price difference that could be it's quite a chunk of, yeah. of yeah. money and then if you're trying to sell something that you only bought two weeks ago and then someone in the usa wants it you can't drop your price low enough for them, because they could if the thing's in stock they can go and buy a brand new one get free shipping and all the rest of it you, you're sort of fighting against that sort of thing similarly because the USA person didn't pay VAT, their price might be 20% lower than what it is new in the shop. But on importing it back into the EU, you will pay 20% VAT. You will pay import duty, which you can find out what that's going to be. And on top of that, you'll be paying a handling fee for collecting those taxes. 
Now that handling fee can be, I don't know, 10 to 12 pounds sometimes. So the, the price can suddenly become considerably higher yep. than what you could buy one a new one for locally sort of thing. So pricing um, of items and remembering um, where you, it's important to say where your location is really in terms of where you're buying it from or where you're selling it uh, or who who's selling it because um they'll then know um if if it's being sold in the usa and you're in the in the eu then you'll know that you're going to have that to pay that extra amount of money on and that's why sometimes actually. buyers prefer to say us only or eu only because yes. of this yeah. they they're not trying to be mean towards you um no. they're really just trying to get the maximum value of their sale price uh, and so mm. then, and then there's also the issue of overseas posts because you don't know mm. who's responsible then for having damaged it did it happen on your side or did it happen on the foreign side and so mm. there is a lot of risk that in, that involves selling planners internationally when we spoke about um packing um planners to to post abroad uh, i think pretty much sure we mentioned not only the cost of postage is quite high these days but particularly on high high value items make sure that you um, ensure the actual um, parcel for the actual amount that your um, thing is worth because if the thing goes missing in the post and you're selling something then you're liable um, for that money and you could end up out of pocket if you have to refund the money and the, you know the thing's gone missing so it's always worthwhile getting insurance getting tracking then you can track the thing that um has actually actually arrived at its destination as well and um, no sense skimping on that yeah i mean if you're gonna spend five hundred dollars no. on a planner please spend the ten dollars mm. or whatever it is to just yeah, buy the whatever. insurance for it don't don't think oh mm. well I'll, that'll be ten dollars less that i'll have to pay don't don't get stingy at the at the wrong time pricing it, 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 <laughs> i'm going to go back around this hurdle from again. the seller's perspective right <laughs> from well from the buyer's yeah, perspective yeah. as well to be honest with you yeah. because we've all seen instances of someone who pays let us say slightly more than what no, most people would possibly pay for something they receive the item and then they, they, they then either realize for one reason or, the, or another, um, oh, this is a bit more expensive than I thought it would be, or I don't like it. No. <laughs> and then they try and sell it, but they then try and sell it for the same price that they paid for it. And everybody's going, well, I wouldn't have paid that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it might be sort of two or three times the normal retail price that they're trying to sell it for. And every sort of shaking their heads and thinking, why did you buy it if you're going to sell it straight away? There's by? something called fair market price, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And if the market, the market will decide what the price is. So for, this goes back to anyone that's that's complained about a price. If you think the price is too high, you're right. That's what I always tell people. If you think the price is too high, mm. you're right. Move on. Right. So the same thing for the person that paid the price that was too high. They were willing to pay that price. But don't think mm. that other people are willing to pay the same price now to buy your planner. <laughs> Just because you paid it doesn't mean other people will, because other people may have researched the fair market price of that item. Mm. Right, Steve? Wait, of course, on eBay, it's an auction. So the price can just go up and you can get you know, cheap bargains on eBay. But you can also see prices running away with themselves mm. from time to time. Um, and, you know, all, you know, if you're doing it on eBay, set yourself a top price and stop at that point. Don't keep going. <laughs> it won't matter. If you miss one, there'll be another Otherwise one. Otherwise, you'll be you eating know, ramen but, noodles for three weeks after yeah. that. <laughs> you'll be out on the street. <laughs> but your planners will look good. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a nice set of planners, yeah. The... the um, the thing I find is, is that, you know, you have to sort of set a top price, yeah. but be prepared in it's when it's a one to one sale, be prepared to haggle the price. OK, they may have put it at, say, one hundred dollars. Make a sort of say may, may, maybe they've said one hundred dollars plus shipping. Go in with an offer and say one hundred dollars, including. Shipping. Right. 
if they've not had any um, people inquire, they may be willing to sell it. And that's that's one of the advantages of being able to sell and buy on the Facebook groups is that there's more interaction. Mm. It's very instant. And you can reach out to Mm. the buyer and say, hey, would you possibly be interested in this or I'm willing to discount the shipping if you're willing to pay cash or whatever whatever the the yeah. issue might be I, I I've had some you know I've one of the hazards of looking after ad spot is of course I see the things and they go oh I'll buy that off you straight away <laughs> it never gets on the has page. that ever happened to you have you bought it straight up <laughs> several times <laughs> Oops. yeah <laughs> it's, it's not good for the collection <laughs> no it is good for the collection <laughs> has, or it is good and I've had some fantastic bargains that way or I've actually put stuff on the page and no one has bought the thing I've left it left it go I'm thinking I'm interested but I'll leave it on the page for two or three weeks and if and then I inquire with the person or if they've just got some, several items for sale yeah. And, you know, the other items are selling and one isn't sort of thing. And, you know, it gets down to this one last item. I said, have you any interest in that? And they say, no. And then I go in with a, well, I'll make you such and such an offer. And they go, oh, yes, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> just just finish it off. Right. And, so <laughs> and you win yourself a good bargain. All of that comes from being able to have your finger on the pulse of the community. And I yeah. think that's the biggest takeaway from this podcast, I would say, is do your research. Don't go in blindly. I remember the Aqua Maldens were going for obscene prices at some point simply because they were no longer being made. And then yeah. Filofax came back with a Kingfisher Blue, I think it was, or something like that. That was very similar to the Aqua. Yeah, very and, similar And the in prices color. in the Maldens dropped tremendously. Um, <laughs> back the Aqua down to Maldens. reality. Yeah. And I mean... Yeah. He, I don't know. Steve and I see eye to eye on this. We're in this for the community. If somebody were to contact me and say, look, could you go lower on the price? I've done that many times. Many times I've gone lower on the price. And because it's part of the community. um, Yeah. So it depends on what your priorities are. I guess it would be right to say. (laughs) I I would always say be prepared to walk away from a deal. Yeah. You know, if the person won't go budge on the price and you think, the price is too high for what it is. Fine, leave it, walk away. Don't be tempted to just continually sort of, you know, beat yourself to death over something yeah. because you think, oh, well, and don't, don't, yeah, don't complain to the admins if the price is too high. If the price yeah. is too high, we all see it, yeah. and you just move on because this is an adult world, mm. and you don't need to complain about everything. <laughs> um, one of the things, though, Steve, that you mentioned is the buying and selling. When is a good time for collectors to think that they ought to start shedding some of their collection? Is is there a better time or a worse time for that? I don't, honestly. I've never really picked up any trend on a sort of, the, in, time, in terms of you know, months in the year when things tend to sell more or, you know, it can be any time in the year, really. Um, it can be. I've noticed people, though, though in the in the spring, like the pastels are a little bit more exciting, mm, and then in the Christmas time, the red ones yes. tend to sell a little bit more, yeah. right? Have you have you picked that up? Certainly, you notice people. Well, just in sort of just general terms, you notice people swapping the colour of the planner depending on the seasons mm. and what have you. Um, and sometimes, and I've always sort of pontificated, I think is the right word, <laughs> for, about do people go into smaller sizes during the summer because they're carrying a smaller bag around or they're not wearing a big heavy jacket or, or, or whatever. That would be a fun poll to do. Whether, that's, whether that is true or not, I don't know. It was just a sort of loosely spinned theory with no, not a lot of uh, credence to it, really. Do um, you? Do you go to a smaller but, planner in the summertime? No, I still stick the same <laughs> one, you know me. <laughs> it, it, it has thinned down, so it's not such a big yeah. issue these yeah. days. But um, um, yeah, so I don't think there's a sort of an ideal time. There's certainly more people around checking websites and things at the end of the year, the beginning of the year, because that tends to be the time when people are tending to think about changing um, formats or something, getting their new calendars for the next year sort of thing. And that's 
for a certain lot of people, that tends to be the time when they suddenly start yeah. thinking, has this really worked well for me this last year? Sort of One thing. tip I can definitely give, having been an admin for some of these sale groups for so long, um, if you don't know how to price something, I, I, if you just come up and you say, I'm thinking of selling this, it's going to get deleted. Please don't do that. I know that's what you're thinking. You're thinking that is there any interest? Mm. And so that's how you're going to gauge or do your market research whether people are actually interested in your item. But that's the wrong way to do mm. it in the groups. The best way yeah. that I have found is to just do a search. Just you know, it. just do a search for it on eBay or on Google mm. and see yeah. what the going yeah. price is. Just do a search for the same item um, in any of the groups and or on eBay and see what the going price is and start gauging from there. This goes also for people that want to auction their items in the Facebook groups. They don't start with the with the starting price and it's very hard for people to make that initial offer because they feel like they don't want to insult anyone. And so if you say, well, I'm hoping to get 300, well, then start at 300, right? I mean, that would be yeah. your auction price. That's why I don't, I'm not too keen on auctions on Facebook. It's not conducive no. to that. It's it's not transparent. Yeah, it's not. That's the problem. Right. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to control. Yeah. In terms of, you know, so who knows? The, you know, the only person that knows what the current price is, is the seller. That's not necessarily a fair way of dealing with things. Right. Really. And so the seller has every prerogative um, to hide the current price to make, make sure that price yeah. keeps going up. And that's what yeah. we as admins take issue with because we're trying to keep everybody fair and honest. And mm. that's the whole point of having a community. So if you don't know yeah. the price of something, research it because that's how you will find out. Mm. There's plenty of ways of finding out what prices are. The current prices, looking at websites. If it's a Filofax item, we have dozens of the old catalogues on Filofaxy going back into the 80s. You can go and look at what the prices of things were back there. OK, it's not the same as the current price because of inflation and what have you. But let's say it's something from, the last, say, the last five years yeah. or so. You can get a pretty good idea of how much something cost. And we do have USA catalogues as well as UK ones and some European ones as well. So you, because the prices vary between sure. the different sites and what have you. Um, so you can get a fairly good idea um, that way as well. Another thing I would mention is communications. That is extremely important. Don't go and advertise something and just before you're about to go on holiday for two weeks <laughs> when you won't have the yeah, item with yeah. you and you're not watching your email um, as quite as regularly as you would if you were still at home or at work or wherever. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to email someone about an item that you've agreed to buy and then they go on holiday or All something right. and they don't tell you. Or uh, if you've purchased an item and you've decided before it even lands in your home that you already don't want it and you put it up for sale, please make sure the item has arrived <laughs> in your home because yeah. if, the, if the buyer <laughs> buys and it still hasn't arrived, now they're waiting for your item to arrive. <laughs> There's, there must be a lot of people shaking their heads at this point. <laughs> they're thinking, nobody does Oh, yes, that, they do. do. They? You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the stuff that we have seen. We, we've been there and got the T-shirt on so many of these yeah. things. It's, you know, you know, nobody would believe some of the things. I don't think it's intentional in a lot of cases. I think it's just, um, you know, they don't, they don't, they're not regular sellers of things. So they, they don't really know how they're sort of... Nuances I've of noticed things, on things Facebook work. things get pretty personal very quickly. Yes. Um, and so I think that goes doubly for sales because now money's involved and money's an emotional subject. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If something does yeah. go wrong, please try to fix it. Just remember in this world where there's wars and all kinds of stuff, we live in a world where we're yeah. lucky enough to be able to sell our belongings to other people who are willing to buy them. So if something does go wrong, just try to amicably close out the sale yeah. it you know it's not turn it into be civil, yeah, be civil. thank you steve <laughs> <laughs> i'm waxing poetic and steve's very logical today just be civil <laughs> so <laughs> yes we i'm sure both of us could re write a book on the, some we of ought the, to uh, messes the, the messes that we've untangled some of them are still tangled <laughs> don't end up on the block list yeah. <laughs> um Right, Steve. So, wh where so, can we find you? We've exhausted ourselves <laughs> with fun and hilarity on this one. And I'm sure we could come back to it again in 12 months' time with a few more tales of tales from the unexpected. Yeah, yeah. 
So where can we find you on the you net? You can find me on Instagram at Karina Tovmasyan or at Planerology.com and soon to be at PlannerCon in San Francisco. I will be speaking there. Who knows about what? But uh, yeah, definitely we'll be speaking there. Where can we find you, Steve? <laughs> you watch this space in your case. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me at Falafaxi.com and TravelersNotebookTimes.com. And remember, if you've enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to like it subscribe to it and share it. Thank you.